Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, before I begin, uh, I would like to say I know we're at our final stages in the conference, so I would try to be as quick as possible and engaging, but I will need your support, okay? First and foremost, thank you Health 2.0 and Food 2.0 for the introduction and inviting me here. It's an honor and a pleasure. My name is Aaron Warwick. I am the co-founder and CEO of Reju. I am a Philadelphia native, a mental health and STEM advocate, and I am here today to speak on AI-based predictive analytics. One second, my apologies. Clicker. Thank you. So just a little bit about my background. Uh, my background is in computer science and electrical engineering. I worked as a control system engineer for over nine years. And currently, right now, I have pursued an interest in mental health and well-being. Because first and foremost, uh, this is a big issue in regards to underserved populations and low resource communities. Also, personally, I have friends, family members, um, close relatives who have demonstrated mental health issues. And this provides passion and purpose in the work that I do. Think smarter, not harder. Can we outsmart mental health with AI-based predictive analytics? This is the question I pose to you today. So by a show of hands, how many people have utilized Uber Eats uh, to order food, Grubhub, DoorDash? OK, perfect. So every day, I receive a notification on my phone at 1 PM to order from my favorite Caribbean restaurant spot, Jam Dung, in Washington, DC. It's great. I love the food. If you're ever in DC, please try it out. So I asked myself one day, how the heck, I didn't see heck, how the heck does Uber Eats know what I want to eat at the precise time? And they noticed through trends and, learn, and, and learning behavior. And what they learned is that, first and foremost, I'm fat and I'm greedy and I need to slow down on my ordering out. But more so, they realized that this is predictive analytics and this is consumer data that we can utilize to bolster our product. So what is AI-based predictive analytics? It's the use of statistical algorithms, modeling, machine learning techniques, and predictive analytics to determine the future based on current and historical trends in data. All right, so now it's time for a cash giveaway. See, I knew that would get everyone's attention. <laughs> All right, so I have $40, if I can find it, if anyone can guess what this is on the next screen. Just shout it out. No, no. A turtle, absolutely not, but close. Any other guesses? A, a box turtle, I like that, but no. <laughs> Any other guesses? You know what? That's not it. But I love that. <laughs> so, so the point here is not about the giveaway or the money. <laughs> the point here is I, I've done this activity several times. And through trends, data, and lear learning behavior of the audience, I was able to determine the outcome of what would happen. Everyone put their phones down and draw their attention to the stage. This is how AI-based predictive analytics work. Because I liked your answer, and no one else got it, I I'll give you the $40 afterwards. <laughs> All right, perfect. Here's Jasmine. Jasmine is a senior executive at an engineering firm, a Ivy League graduate, star performer, always meets her deadlines, always is on time to work. Although Jasmine shined at her workplace, she suffered severely, and her light was dimmed back at home due to the impacts of work stress. Like many of us, Jasmine continued to figure out what was wrong, but she couldn't quite put her finger on it. Um, she thought to herself, what was these issues, and why was I feeling like this? Although she felt this way, Jasmine continued to show up to work and struggle to meet deadlines. Like many of us, we are financially and fiscally rewarded to work harder. Not work smarter, not work more efficiently, but just do more work. So as Jasmine continued to struggle to work, meet deadlines, make it to meetings, her productivity was severely impacted. She started going to meetings late. 
She was tardy to work. She missed deadlines until ultimately Jasmine stopped showing up. So one of Jasmine's colleagues received a phone call. It was a very disturbing phone call. And what she found out was that Jasmine passed away. Jasmine had committed suicide. Now, if higher-ups were ahead of this, maybe Jasmine will be here today. 17.8 million Americans suffer from depressive disorder, stress, and anxiety. Life expectancy for women and men, respectively, is 7 and 18 years shorter than women and men without depressive disorders. Job stress is estimated to cost the U.S. economy more than $300 billion in losses due to absenteeism, injuries and accidents, production loss, and operation impairment. Work stress employees are 41% less productive, 31% less engaged, and 15% are already out the door looking for another job. They turned in their resignation letter and not looking back. So I ask you, if we can get ahead of the work stress, the work stress impacts of mental health, then maybe we can positively influence the health and well-being of employees and individuals and also promote corporate growth. And with AI-based predictive analytics, we can, and here's how. Reju is leading the charge in AI-based predictive analytics by capturing useful data regarding the state of mental health to better measure, determine, and improve well-being outcomes. Reju is a holistic wellness and mental health application that serves as a personal guide to mental, physical, and emotional success. We encourage our users to live their best lives by equipping them with bite-sized pieces of wisdom, guidance, and inspiration. Reju provides peer-to-peer -peer therapy sessions, bridging the gap between end users and licensed practitioners worldwide. With the ability to chat one-on-one -on -one with wellness experts or schedule one-on-one -on -one video therapy sessions with therapists all powered by AI technology and machine learning techniques. We do this by collecting specific inputs, such as key performance indicators, data, metrics, wellness assessments, and looking at user behavior and learning behaviors. We aggregate this information, and we provide it in the form of outputs, such as relevant and resourceful wellness solutions. These solutions may include suggested practitioners, therapy sessions, timely in-app notifications, progress reports, and other resourceful and relevant content and publications and wellness tips for our users. What are the benefits? Developing wellness programs that support the mental health in the workplace of individuals should be a priority to senior leaders, executives, managers, supervisors, and HR professionals. AI-based predictive analytics can save organizations three to four million dollars in annual costs and losses due to accidents, absenteeism, impaired operations, and production loss. It can reduce employee turnover, reduce direct medical costs, legal costs, and insurance costs, reduce the risk of chronic health diseases such as cardiovascular disease, respiratory disorders, diabetes, and much more. So I ask a question, and by a show of hands, just raise your hand. Raise your hand if you know some type of celebrity, influencer, or popular figure who have demonstrated mental health or wellness issues. By a show of hand. Great. Keep your hands up. Now raise your hand if you know a friend or family matter, matter excuse me, family matter, or close relative who has demonstrated mental health issues and keep your hands up. Thank you. Raise your hand if yourself have demonstrated any mental health or wellness issues. Now look around the room. Mental health does not discriminate based on creed, culture, ethnic background, economic status, political affiliation, so on and so forth. With AI-based predictive analytics, I believe we can get ahead of mental health and think smarter, not harder, and hopefully your story does not have to be Jasmine's story. My name is Aaron Warwick. Thanks again. Everyone have a good day. Uh, I'm not sure if I have time, but is there any questions or comments from the audience? You could take your time. I'll yell if I have to. So I just downloaded your app. 
and I, I spoke up there, I've been very raw on mine, I have bipolar 2 disorder and all this. With that, is this just for businesses, or would you say this is for people like me who can actually turn around and connect with a therapist, and how would I be able to use this to better my employees, such as someone like this guy right here who drives me nuts? Great question, and thank you for that. So Reju provides two models. Uh, we cater to our B2C and B2B model, providing wellness resources to consumers individually and also to larger organizations. Uh, we did validate and test the product in a variety of industries, such as workforce and professional development, uh, education, post-secondary education, and health and Medicare. Uh, the difference is, is that we look at and work closely with organizations to say, hey, what are your needs? You know, where are you lacking? Is there any production impairment? You know, what are the challenges of your employees? And how can we go in, collect this data, work closely with them, and provide wellness resources to them to ultimately improve not only overhead costs, but also reduce any, um, excuse me, impaired operations or production loss. And also, we do provide us on a B2C level, you can subscribe as an individual user um, and use it, you know, by yourself, you know, if you wanted to. Thank you. Yes. Great question. So uh, that's a, a hot topic. Um, at the current moment, we make sure that our application is HIPAA compliant, of course, um, but we lead with honesty and integrity. Uh, our goal here is to make sure that our consumers know that we're transparent about how we're utilizing the data and what it's utilized for, and you know how is it uh, acquired, how is the data communicated and sent to the cloud, and making sure that our corporate governance policies and procedures all align with HIPAA compliance. Now that's a challenging task and we work every day with our team who work in cybersecurity and HIPAA compliance to make sure that we follow these standards. Any other questions? Yes, sir. <laughs> So uh, first of all, thank you. Um, uh, mental health is a serious problem uh, for me. It's a problem for my child. It's a problem for my wife. Um, it, it, depression runs deep in our family. Um, and uh, I, I just want to say thank you for, for spending any time on that. It's uh, something that people were not worried about before, that's, that, that they have that. Um, we, we're really a small company. We don't have a whole lot of. Uh, um, capital to spend on something like that. I know two of my two of my employees are um, ex-military and I know that they have tons of problems and they don't want to talk to anyone so having an app like this would be great. I just don't know if uh, we can do it cost effectively so I'm just curious about how that would work. Great question. Uh, one thing we, we love to pride ourselves on is providing a affordable one-stop shop all-encompassing wellness platform. Um, with that being said, we want to have a low barrier of entry to anyone utilizing these services. Um, also, we work specifically with organizations to tailor our custom package or resources to them. So no one feels like they're ostracized or this isn't something that I can afford or maybe it's not for me. So we make this a specific experience for the user or the organization. Last question. That? I might ask two now. Uh, what have you seen with, this is for employers and for people that want to do this, what have you seen with the youth? Because the youth are seeing the highest rates of suicide rate in middle school and high schools as ever before, than ever before. How can your app start to be used to connect with schools and other generations or is that not something on your timeline? Great question. Uh, to take a step back, we actually did a pilot program with a nonprofit organization that works specifically with youth and professional and workplace development. And one thing that they stated was that mental health and the impacts of health inequities in their community have impacted their performance in this organization or at work or their internship. So we worked closely with them and we did realize these findings that suicide, um, stress, anxiety regarding taking tests, these things were a high factor in their performance. So we looked at some of the metrics and KPIs with the organization saying, what are your goals with them and how can we find wellness resources and work specifically with them to aid that? Thank you.